So blueberries are in season, and in my house this means blueberry vareniki. The fact that I'm making this dish with a fractured arm should give you an idea of how much I love it. Luckily, I have a few absolutely fabulous Oompa Loompas, so I'll have plenty of help. The timestamp for the recipe is in the description below, but given that it's one of my favorite dishes, I have a lot to say on this topic. If you've never heard of fruit pasta, you probably have never visited Eastern Europe in the summer. Slavic nations go absolutely nuts for the dumplings filled with sour cherries, apricots, plums, and my absolutely favorite blueberries. If you think that sweet pasta is weird, let me set you straight. Pretty much all those lend themselves well to both sweet and savory dishes. Pies and tarts can be sweet and savory. Cream puffs can be sweet and savory, so why shouldn't pasta be sweet and savory? It's like a soup dumpling meets ripe fruit. What's not to love about that? <laughs> the first question I get when I introduce people to this dish is, how does this fit into a meal? Is this a dessert? Is this the main course? In my house, it's the main course. It's way too good to only eat a small dessert portion, and it's not nearly as sweet as most desserts. Come on, Americans, the idea of eating a sweet dish as the main course should be right up your alley. You do it all the time for brunch, right? Waffles, pancakes, French toast. Well, blueberry vareniki, I just like that. Only way less sweet and way more tasty. Since the blueberries are the star of the show, they have to be spectacular. In other words, local. I've never succeeded with this dish using supermarket blueberries. They're always too mushy and bland, and they never have the acidity necessary for this dish. Of course, I live in Massachusetts, where supermarket fruit sucks. Maybe if I lived in California, it would be better. Ideally, you want berries that are both sweet and Tart. If they're not sweet enough, that's easily fixable. We'll be adding sugar into each dumpling, and you can add a bit more or less depending on how sweet your berries are. But if your blueberries have no acidity, you'll be in trouble, because lemon juice might make your dough soggy, so I prefer not to add it. I do not wash the blueberries for this dish, because I want them to be dry. These are local organic berries, so I'm just not going to worry about it. If you want to wash them, make sure you spread them out on a towel to dry before using. This is my standard dough for Eastern European dumplings. It's the same one I use for pilmeni. You can make it by hand using the well method. You can use a food processor like I do in the pilmeni video, or you can use a mixer. Today I'll use a mixer since many people have been asking me how do you make pasta dough in a mixer? The ratio of ingredients and the procedure is exactly the same as my Italian egg pasta dough. The only difference is that this dough has less eggs and more water. The reason for this is that it is rolled thicker, and thus it needs to be less tough. In a mixer, it's best to start with the wet ingredients on the bottom. Put the mixer bowl on a scale, zero it out, and add one whole egg and one egg yolk. Do not zero out the scale after adding the eggs. Add enough cold water until you get 185 grams of liquid ingredients. Pour slowly. Water is heavy. Add 300 grams of bread flour. Unbleached all-purpose will work in a pinch, but will result in a slightly flabbier texture. Then add the right amount of salt for your salt type. Fit the mixer with a dough hook and get it going on medium-low speed. After several minutes, you'll get a dough. In real life, everything takes way longer than it does in a video, so be patient. When you get to a homogeneous consistency, touch the dough with your finger to check if it's at all sticky. Mine is, which is not surprising. Summers in Boston are very humid, and it looks like I'll need more flour to get to the right texture. Once all your flour is absorbed, give it a squeeze and see if you got out of the sticky stage. Yes, we're good. So I'll give it another couple of minutes of kneading and get it out. 
I shoot for about 6 minutes in the mixer from the time the original dough becomes homogeneous. If you had to add a bit of flour during those 6 minutes like I did, you don't need to restart the timer. Unfortunately, this hands-free kneading won't work in every mixer. Any mixer can bring the wet and dry ingredients together. But the success of the kneading step will depend on your mixer. If you have a spiral hook like this KitchenAid Pro, or if you have another good mixer like Kenwood, you could let your mixer do all the kneading. But if you have a KitchenAid Classic or Artisan with a C-hook or some other not-so-great mixer, chances are your dough hook will whack the ball of dough around, but won't wrap it around itself in a sort of spiral that is necessary for good kneading. If that's the case, get it out onto the counter and knead for 8 minutes by hand. I'll link to the detailed instructions on kneading pasta dough below this video. This dough is turning out beautifully. It's tacky, but not sticky, and smooth as a baby's butt. <laughs> Sprinkle it with flour, wrap in plastic, and let it rest at room temperature for at least 30 minutes and up to several hours. This will let the gluten relax so that the dough won't shrink too much when we try to roll it out. Cut the dough into four pieces and keep three of them wrapped tightly in plastic while working with the fourth piece. Flatten out the piece of dough and sprinkle it generously with flour on both sides. Roll it out to the thickness of about 4 mm. Put it through a pasta machine on the thickest setting. Then we need to do the latter turn 3 to 4 times. This will help us get the right width, the right texture, and it will help us get rid of any air bubbles in the dough. Fold the dough into thirds. Flatten it out reflour, and feed it back through the machine. We're still on the thickest setting. At some point during all this folding, I encountered the problem that so many of you write to me about. You see this chewed up texture? That's either because I didn't use enough flour, or it didn't roll out my dough thinly enough before feeding it through the machine. It's very easily fixed. Just refold, reflour, and re-roll and refeed. I'll try to roll it a bit thinner with my rolling pin. Do this a couple of times and you'll be back in business. The cookie cutter we'll use is 8.5 cm in diameter. I find that you need this big size to fit a good bit of blueberries, which will produce that awesome blueberry explosion. To reduce the amount of scraps, shoot for your ribbon to be close to the size of your cookie cutter before you start thinning it out. On my machine, 1 is the thickest setting and 8 is the thinnest. Today we're going to setting 5. But we can't just jump there or our dough could rip. We have to go through all the settings one at a time. If at any point your dough feels at all sticky, add more flour. In case your machine settings are different from mine, my final thickness is about 2 mm. As soon as you roll out the first piece of dough, you need to cut it and fill it. If you let it sit, it will dry up. Place it on a cutting board that is generously sprinkled with semola flour or just plain old flour if you don't have semola. I find that semola is better at reducing sticking than all-purpose, but both will work. You'll probably have to cut your ribbon in half to make it fit on the board. Cut out the circles, leaving no space between them to maximize how many you'll get. The basic principle is the same as with all filled pastas. Lots of flour under the dough, but no flour on top of the dough. This will help your dough seal together. Collect the scraps, smoosh them together, wrap tightly in plastic, and keep adding to this bowl of scraps as you roll out the rest of the dough. In the end, these scraps can be re-rolled. You can skip the folding step with them since they were already folded plenty and floured plenty. I know that reusing the scraps seems wrong. Wouldn't they feel way drier due to all that extra flour that was worked into them? Yes, they feel drier, but it all works out. After cooking, no one will ever know. Unless you're very fast at shaping, I suggest you cover most of your circles with plastic so that they don't dry up. Our first dumpling is a dry run. It will help us figure out how many blueberries we need and how much sugar we'll need. 
I'll try around 7 blueberries and a quarter teaspoon of sugar. Let's see if we can seal it without ripping it. This feels like roughly the right amount of blueberries. If we don't put in enough, the dumplings won't be juicy. And if we put in too much, the dough might rip. So you'll need to experiment. When your dumpling is done, place it on a parchment or foil lined baking sheet that is very generously floured. I prefer semola for this, but regular flour works too. Now that we know that we'll need around 7 blueberries, let's do a taste test. Put 7 blueberries into a small cup, add a quarter teaspoon of sugar and pop it in a microwave for 10 to 15 seconds or just until the blueberries burst. Cool it slightly and taste. See how you like the sweetness level and it just is necessary for the rest of the dumplings. I feel like a quarter teaspoon of sugar is just right, so I'll keep on going like this. Here are a few shaping tips for you. If your seven blueberries are lying on the dough in a circle, it will be very hard to seal. What you want is about five blueberries on the bottom and two on top, like this. Seal the dough in the middle and then on the sides. If any blueberries roll out, just shove them back in. It is crucial that the dumplings are sealed tightly or they'll burst in the water and become a soggy watery mess. After I get the edges to connect, I go through them one more time, gently rubbing them between my thumb and index finger to seal them tightly. If your edge curls up like this, you know it's a good seal. To speed things up, I usually put the filling on several circles of dough and then start sealing them. Don't be afraid to stretch the dough out a little. It's very resilient. And after you seal one side, you might want to pick up the dumpling and tilt it open side up to prevent the blueberries from rolling out. Now that my Oompa Loompa scheme to help will be done in no time. When you're done, you can either cook your vareniki right away or put the baking sheet with the finished dumplings in the freezer just until they are hard, about two hours. Then immediately move them into a Ziploc bag and keep in the freezer until you want to use them, if possible within a month. Moving them into a Ziploc bag as soon as they freeze is crucial. If you leave them uncovered in the freezer for too long, they'll dehydrate and the dough will crack. Bring a large pot of water to almost a boil, salt it generously, but not quite as generously as you would for savory pasta. Bring the water to a full boil. I like to cook one dumpling as a dry run. The bottleneck here are the blueberries. This dough is incredibly flexible with timing. It doesn't overcook easily, but we need to get the blueberries to start releasing juice. It's been about five minutes and it's starting to look right. I'm starting to see a bit of pink through the dough and when I press on the bumps left by the blueberries, they feel completely soft. Let's cut into it and see how we're doing. There is some juice oozing out, which is good, but my blueberries seem a tad too intact, so I think we could use another minute of cooking. This will be very helpful information when we cook the whole batch. The easiest way to get them into the pot is to move them to a bowl and dump them in. I like to use a small bowl and do this in batches so that they don't crush each other. Okay, we're all in. Duck them all into the water and cover the pot until you get the boil back. Once you get the boil back, that's when you want to set the timer for the best guess as to when they'll be done. We did five minutes on our trial one and it looked like it could use a bit more time, so I'll set it for six minutes. For frozen ones, you might need a bit longer. That's why it really helps to do a trial dumpling. As you might have noticed, they like to float and to help their top cook as much as the bottom, I like to partially cover them. You'll need to turn down the heat so that the water doesn't boil out of the pot. If you see the water bubbling too much, uncover, stir, and then cover again. I want to keep things at an energetic simmer, but not a rolling boil. If you see a lot of pink juice through the dough on some of them, like this one, I suggest you get it out. Or if you see a very thin dough that is threatening to burst, it might be best to get it out early too. Okay. It's been six minutes since we got the boil and it's time to check them. 
feels great. The blueberries feel completely soft, so let's get them all out into a large pan or bowl with five tablespoons of melted butter. Under no circumstances should you use a colander that will crush many of them, which would be very sad. Give them a gentle stir and then make the sour cream sauce. Put half a cup of sour cream into a bowl, add about a quarter cup of cooking water and a couple teaspoons of sugar. Whisk it up and pour over the dumplings. Give them a stir and sprinkle with a little extra sugar to taste. The right way to eat them is to put a whole one in your mouth and let all that blueberry juice explode. But you don't want to burn yourself, so it's a good idea to cut the first one in half to test for temperature. I can't believe we did it! A huge thanks to my family for helping me with this project and for taking such good care of me. And thanks to all my viewers for sending me wishes for a speedy recovery. As we've learned from this video, you can take Helen out of the kitchen, but you can't take the kitchen out of Helen. <laughs> I know the plan was to take it easy and just work on Q&A videos, but then I saw those awesome blueberries that only happen in Massachusetts for a few weeks a year, and I couldn't help myself. Here are more very detailed culinary tutorials for you to check out, and if you're ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.